imagine you are designing system for managing users for your website. If you are using C Sharp, your system could look something like this. And don't worry about me using C Sharp. This guide is language agnostic and I will explain everything, but if you don't get something, you can always ask me in the comments. So, in our system we have our user model with ID, name and email. We have also user repository that saves our user to some database context and we have user service that validates our newly created user. And this service throws exceptions when there is some problem with the validation. And in our controller we catch these exceptions and return bad request. But if there's no problem, we just return ID of the newly created user. This is, you could say, a very natural way to solve this situation if we want to follow the single responsibility principle. And this is the method that I was taught when I studied computer science. But it has some problems that might not be too obvious when looking at this simple example. And if you didn't know, this method is considered an anti-pattern. First of all, if we didn't look before at the service layer, would you be able to tell me, looking only at the method signature, what exceptions we have to handle in this method? Probably not. You would have to go into an other file and see for yourself. In that simple project, that is not a problem. But in real life projects, this method could and should be much more complicated. And you also need to check layers underneath uh, this service layer. That means you could easily miss some hidden error paths. And even after you check all of them, your exception handling in the catch blocks becomes very tightly coupled, creating a catch block hell with deeply nested logic. Because you most likely would need to create separate blocks to handle different types of exceptions. And in languages like C Sharp or Java, exceptions create more performance overhead than simple return types which can become a problem when scaling your applications. And as always, in this type of situations, we have a design pattern that will help us. This time, this design pattern comes from the functional programming and is based on a monad. You don't need to worry about what a monad is because I will explain that in another video in my design pattern series on this channel. This pattern, as you could guess from the title, is called the result pattern. And this time I don't have any UML diagrams, but I will explain it on the go. So let's create a result class. So first of all, we will need to create new directory, for example, we call it utils, and we'll create new class and we'll call it result. Okay, this class will be generic. So we'll provide a T and TE types. If you don't know how generics work, you can watch my video about generics in Java. They work practically the same in C Sharp and any other language. This class will have also three properties. There will be a success boolean, so we will check if our result is success or failure. There will be also a generic value that will store the result. And also there will be generic error value. So let's create them. First of all, public uh, bool is success and we will also create a getter for it a public t value also with a getter and public te error also with a getter now we will create a constructor for the results so private Results, uh, bool is success, t value, and t error, and is success. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, we will need to change it to proper naming convention in C sharp. So is success equals is success, value equals value. So why we made this constructor private? It's because we need to create two static methods that will return new result and we don't want to create result uh, any other way. So let's create, first of all, a static method for the success state. So public static result um, t, t, e, 
and success. This will, and this method will get a T value in the signature and will return new results te true value and some default value for error. Uh, we don't return null for the error because C# -sharp doesn't allow that for the generic type. And also we will create public static result failure for the failed state and return new result te false and default error. Oh, there's some uh, mistake here. Return and also we will delete this part here. It's not needed. After that, for simplicity in the same file, I will declare enum with all no validation errors that we can have. So public enum, add user error, and for example, name required, and email required, and invalid email. Now we need to go to our user service and change our method signature. So instead of returning task user, we will return we will return result user and use add user error. Of course, we also need to change it in the uh, interface. So results um, user and user add user error. By the way, in C# -sharp and .NET, we return task for operations, and it's a framework-specific stuff. So for now, just pretend it's not there. The same uh, when it comes to the async keyword. Now, instead of throwing exceptions, we will return result with user and user error of a failure state, and we'll pass enum value to determine the failure type. So let's replace our old code. So if there is like a null or white space in our username, we'll return, return results of type user and user error, of course, add user error and all state failure and user add user error name required. We will copy this for all of the other failure paths and we will just replace the enum value. So here we will go for email required and here email invalid. Okay, and now let's return a success state for our user. So we will just return. Also, I can also put it in other lanes. So added equals await repo add user async. And now we will just return results of user add user and success. After all of that hard work, we can update our controller. And instead of this cache block, we'll replace it with an if statement. And if there is an error, so a positive success, we'll return that information that there's some error using a switch statement. First of all, we will create new variables. So results equals await service dot add user async and pass user. And if result dot is success. So we will check if there is a failure. So opposite of success, we will return a switch statement. So return result dot error and switch. Now let's list all of the possible errors we could have with the validation. 
so add user error email required and we'll return bad request with uh, the information that the email is required. Now let's list add user invalid email, of course invalid email and add user error name required, bad request name required. Also, we will add a default state if there, if we, for example, forget to list some error. So bad request and a no error. And in the end, if there is no errors, we will return our user ID, but we will do that in the .NET way. So I will just paste, paste the code we had before. So create an action name of get user by the ID and new uh, result ID. And this is basically how you implement the result pattern. Here is my last video about the builder pattern that you need to watch right now. Until the next time, create some amazing applications.